Well, we're standing on the promises of God, and that's basically what the sermon's about today. We need to get that speaker fixed. <laughs> okay. So charity and dignity. Now, many times, how can I put this in the easy way? You see people that help other people, but they make a big deal out of it. There's a way to help someone, which is a Christian way, a better way. And we're going to do an example of that today. So the title of the sermon is Charity and Dignity. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. I know my son can be, uh, my newborn son can be a distraction, uh, especially for everyone here. He's super cute, so we'll try and focus on the service if we can. If, if uh, He's a good kid. Okay, now... Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheep. So she came and had continued, even from the morning till now. And she, and she tarried a little in the house. Now I have to explain something here. Um, Wait to brilliant pull up okay what's happened here this woman needs charity okay she's a woman from another country she's not from israel she's from one of their most hated enemies the moabites now these people were had a terrible terrible religion it was all about uh throwing children into fires and all these terrible terrible things she chose to leave all that and trust in God. Now, she's helped a, a very old, um, her mother-in-law, an Israeli woman. And what's happened? They're so poor that they're going to other people's land. And after everyone's finished, she's going in and taking little bits of corn to live. Okay? And she's gone up to a guy and said, you know, you see here where they clear the corn. After everyone's finished, is it okay if I go and pick up the bits and pieces in your field so we can eat? Now, there's many ways that people could have done, took an advantage of her, got free slave labor. They could have done many bad things to this woman. And the message today is about some Christians that make a big deal about the charity work they do. And in future, how we should wrap charity in dignity. Let that person keep their dignity. Now, what happens? He's a rich man, a mighty man of wealth. And how many people have we seen that are mighty men of wealth that are good and bad? We've seen both types, right? The man that bought Jesus' grave. He was a rich man, very, very rich man. But we see that with dignity, he gave it to God. Okay, let's go to the next one. I do a thing with the quick up. Brilliant. I'm definitely going to need this. Okay. Then said Boaz, the rich man, to Ruth, Here is thou not my daughter. This is how he treats a stranger. Now, this is this is one of the most hated. Uh, you know, it's like somebody, it's like a Greek and a Turk. It's like, uh, you know, uh, someone from Iraq and someone from America or something. It's like you're talking about the most hated uh, rivals. This is how he treats her. Listen to the dignity that he gives this woman. Here is thou not my daughter. Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence. But abide here fast by my maidens. He has treated a stranger in this way. How many times have we gone to a foreign country? I know this is my country. But have any of you felt treated badly? I know my wife was shocked. When my wife said to me, because uh, they, they were giving her so much grief because she's from the Philippines. Okay, this woman. Everyone else was nice to her in the government. But there was one woman that just hated my wife because she's from the Philippines. You know, 
how dare you marry a, a foreigner to them, you know? And I said to her, give me the phone. And I spoke to her. And she said, Mario, this is how we are treated all the time. And my heart sank. Because if you go to a foreign country, according to Christianity, you're supposed to welcome the stranger. You're supposed to treat the stranger well. And this is what's happened here with Boaz, the rich man. Okay? No, we'll look after you. I'm going to treat you like a daughter. He doesn't want anything from her. Let thine eyes. He knows that if she goes to another field, she could be in trouble. Stay here and, and we'll look after you. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? Nobody will bother you here. I'm going to look after you. And when thou art athirst, go into the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. If there's a foreigner, have we ever invited them into our house to eat? You see, there's a, there's a weird thing in Cyprus. Did you know that you can go into someone else's field and eat their fruit and you're not trespassing and it's completely legal? That's, a, that, that's over here. That's what it is. Because, yeah, you can't take any of the fruit away. That's stealing. But you can go into someone's field and eat. You know where that rule comes from? The Bible. Leave the edges, you're supposed in the Bible, I should have put it in. You're supposed to leave fruit on the edges of your field so that people can take it. That was a rule of God. It was a brilliant rule. Okay? So this is how he's treating her. Okay? Then she fell on her face, bowed herself to the ground, and said, Why have I found grace in thine eyes? That thou should take knowledge of me, seeing I'm a stranger. I'm a foreigner here. Why are you treating me so nicely? And this is the reason why. Boaz answered and said unto her, It has fully been shown me all that thou hast done. The good things that you do, you don't think other people have seen them. But they have. There's many people that have done good things for this church, and I've seen it. Unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thy husband. And how thou hast left thy father and mother and the land of the nativity, and art come with a people which thou knewest not heretofore. You didn't know about the people of God, but you left your religion your people, and came and did the right thing. Now, we've got to remember that. We've got to understand that sometimes your best friend can be somebody who isn't, doesn't call themselves a believer, but they're, they're a good person. They just don't know Christ yet. These are people that can help you in your time of need. I chose the book of Ruth because the book of Ruth People don't really read it. They skip over it. It ends up more of a love story in the end, and I hate love stories. But this is the part I'm only going to say here. The Lord recompensed thy work with a full reward of the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you've come to trust. Have we given people a chance to be Christians, or have we rejected people in our lives because they're not Christians? I know I've done that. I won't rent the property to you because you're not Christian. How do you know they're not going to become Christian? How do you know? How do you know that they're not calling themselves Christians? I've been guilty of this. You don't know if someone's good or bad because you haven't given them a chance. The good things that this woman has done, they've come to the ears of these people. Boaz said to her, at mealtime, come thou hither. You will eat with us. If we went to a foreign land and somebody invited us into their house to eat, how would we feel? Wow, these people are people. These people are fantastic. This is how we would feel. Eat of thy bread, dig thy morsel of vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers 
and he reached into a parched pool, and she did eat, and was sufficed and led. Now, the dignity part. Leave someone their dignity if you're going to help them. Leave it for them. When she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, let her glean even among the sheaves, reproach her not. Let her take the good stuff. This is a sheaf, by the way. Let her take this. If somebody says, I remember somebody said to me, we put someone in the church who was homeless and they stole five euro. I was like, but I would have given them 10 or 20. But there was a big uproar. She stole five euro from the collection tin. I know it's wrong to do that, to take from a church. But think about it. What's the church for? It's to help people like that. I didn't care about the money. I really didn't care about the money. I wanted to help that young homeless woman. You know, It's a woman as well. Let fall some of the handfuls on purpose for her. Leave them that she may glean them. Rebuke her not. The charity is this. You leave some money somewhere. You leave some food somewhere. Help yourself. Let them take it. Give them a job. Have you noticed this? It's not just a handout. He's not just, here, take some money. I'm a rich man. He's, he's giving her a job. And letting her earn that money. And that's the best thing to do. When people ask me for money, because in the church you have to be very, very careful. You, Every type of con man will come for you. My brother Marco rebuked me on it. He's right. Every type of person will come up with any type of story to con you. And I've been conned many times. Trying to help someone who was supposedly in need. Now, Give them a job. Give them a job. We were giving out money to these people that came from Egypt. We're persecuted Christians from Egypt. Oh, we feel sorry for you. Here's some money. And we were giving them money. And then someone in the church said, wait, give her a job. Listen, we'll give you a job. Instead of giving you the 50 euro, you clean the church for us. Yeah, which was already clean anyway. <laughs> Because um, I remember Pelita used to come. People used to come and they used to clean the church the night before. And I know everyone did things. I know one of helps and stuff like that. But when we said that to her, when we said we'll pay you to clean the church, she left. Did she need the money? If I was starving for money, I would clean the church. I've worked in hotels as a cleaner before when I needed money. That person's not really in need. You see a homeless person on the street, okay, and you offer to buy them food, they go, ah, oh, not that, no thanks. Well, hang on a minute. If you were actually in need, you would eat that food, right? But that's what people do. They, they con you. They just want handouts sometimes. Now, what did Jesus say? To be like Boaz was, okay, when you do charity, take heed that you don't do your arms before men. To be seen of them. So Jesus is saying, deliberately don't do it. You know, if you're doing it so that people see it and there's video on you and you've got a camera crew there. And you've got a camera crew there, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Otherwise, you have no reward. The charity that you do, if you make a big deal about it. You get no reward. Zero reward of your Father which is in heaven. Okay? You've had your reward, Jesus has said. Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound the trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say to you, they have their reward. They have their reward. Okay, but when you do arms, when you do charity, when you give to the church, when you do these things, okay, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. Well, that's impossible to do. Except that that's how secretive you have to be. When Jesus healed someone in the Bible, the, the book of John says that there are many things that Jesus done, 
that can't be written in the books. It would just take too many books. But when Jesus healed someone, he healed him and said, don't go and tell anyone about what's happened. And that guy went and broadcast it out. <laughs> okay? There's nothing that would happen. And when Jesus was getting too many crowds, he knew that Christianity was done. His job was done. He would move to the next city. It's not about the glory. Thine arms may be in secret, that thy father which sees in secret himself shall reward thee openly. You see, if we trust in God, if we trust in God, we know that he will see the things we do in secret. And it feels good that you haven't boasted about it. Try it. Do something amazing. Help someone, but don't let anyone notice. You'll see how good it feels inside. Charity actually feels amazing. Now, we've had this problem before. We get this in the Bible studies sometimes. Someone will want to pray for about an hour about everything. Okay? God knows what you need. Relax. You don't have to pray for every single little thing. Okay? When you pray, don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they may be heard for their much speaking. 20 Hail Marys, for example. Okay? If you think that God doesn't know what you need, then you don't know God. Pray anyway for the things that you want. Pour your heart out to God and ask. But don't think that he doesn't already know. He already knows what you need. Be ye therefore like un don't, uh, be ye not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. He knows what you need. Now this is, um, I think, I would say a problem in Christianity because sometimes people feel that they have to pray for the same thing 50 times. And if they repeat it and repeat it, they'll get it. It's true that you should carry on praying for those things. Keep repeating the prayer. But it's not true that if you repeat the prayer just for the sake of hearing it again and again and again that you'll get it. God's not deaf. He heard you the first time. He understands. Okay? Now, here is a command from Jesus. Lay not up for yourself treasures on earth. I'll explain what this place is in a minute. This is a one billion pound one billion pound front room that's not a joke the artwork, the decor it's got tons of gold stuck to the walls okay but the bible says don't do that don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust does corrupt where thieves break in and steal over this, uh, for those people watching, it's the top picture, obviously. Okay? You see here. Now, I understand doing up your front room where you live. I understand having a nice TV. You come home, you know. Do I understand spending one billion on it? No, I don't understand it. Okay? This is another command from Jesus. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where the thieves do not break through nor steal. If this is a one billion house, how much security do you need to stop people stealing the stuff in it? I would never sleep one wink in this. I'd be like, but what about that Rembrandt on the wall? You know, someone might come in and take it. I must put security glass over that and then an alarm and then the police and then a. No. In my front room, I know no one's going to come in and steal anything. It's just not like that. Anyway, so don't lay that up. Okay? You can't serve, you can't serve two masters. You can't do it. No man can serve two masters. Either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one, despise the other. You cannot serve God and Mammon. What's Mammon? Mammon is... Uh, this world, it's earthly pleasures, it's earthly materialistic things. Okay? You can't do it. It's the same way we can't, I can't work at two different computer companies a day. I can't be there and here. 
I have to work for one person only. It's the same as here. You cannot do these both at the same time. You can't. Do rich people give to charity? Yes, they do. There's some fantastic, fantastic movie stars, boxers, people like that that give money to charity. Fantastic people. But that means they wouldn't be able to spend all the money on themselves. They can't do both. Okay. Therefore, take what? No thought. Christians worry too much about tomorrow. I'm guilty of this, and most Christians are guilty of this. I pray that one day we're not guilty of this. Okay? We worry too much about what's going to happen tomorrow. Saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, wherewithal, where shall we be clothed? For after these things did the Gentiles seek. The non-believers out there, they worry about these things. If somebody's going to take your house because you haven't paid the mortgage, then they've taken it. Worrying about it isn't going to make a difference. It's not our style as Christians. Okay? Your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. He knows. He knows better than we do what we have need of. I remember a time I was going to be famous, if you will. I was in one film... And I was going to be in another film or something. It was on Netflix. I was in a film on Netflix. And uh, I thought, you know, what happened to me that time, maybe I would have been famous, if only this, if only that. God save me from this. If it means I'm going to live my life as a bad person, I don't want to. God, give me problems in my life that will prevent me from being a bad person. Whatever it is that stops it, okay? Because I know that he knows what's best for me. Okay. I see my mother's here today. I'm going to ask a straight question, okay? When I was a child, did I ask for things that would have been bad for me? Did I ask for £100 to go out when I only needed three? Did I ask to play with the matches and the petrol? You know, I'm just spitballing here, but I'm just saying. Do children ask for things that are not actually good for them because they don't actually know what's good for them yet? I didn't used to ask for anything, did I? Was I a good kid? Not really, but. <laughs> so I wasn't materialistic. Okay. I'm not sure. I can't remember much. So, what I'm saying is this, okay? When you grow up, and I mean grow up as a Christian, you'll realize that the things that you're asking for aren't in line with God's plan. They're not in line. We need to get in line with what God wants. God, if this business deal, who's got the guts to actually ask this? God, if this next job pays me more money, but brings me further away from you, don't let me get it. Lord, send me to a job that pays me less money, but keeps me closer to you. Wow. Who's got the guts to have that prayer? That's a difficult prayer, isn't it? God, give me less money, but closer to you. But that's what we need to get to. Okay. Therefore have I also made you contemptible. This is when their Israel was going bad. Okay? And base before the people, according as you have not kept my ways, but you have been what? Partial. You have been partial in the law. A lot of Christians today, they're very partial. I'll follow this part of the Bible, but this part, you know, it's a bit difficult. This part that says I have to be patient and trust God. Oh, you know, it's uh, a little bit difficult. I don't like that part. You've been a little bit partial in the law. You'll follow some of it, but we won't follow all of the Bible. Well, you know, that part is, you, you know, you've got to say that same sex is wrong. Okay? Well, you know, it's modern day now, and, you know, we can't really, no, don't be partial. 
either you, you can't put your foot in the swimming pool and, and, and stay there forever. At some point, you've got to dive in or walk away. And that's Christianity. Either get into it or don't call yourself a Christian. You cannot be partial. You have wearied the Lord with your words. Yet you say, wherein have we wearied him? When you say, everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighteth in them. Or where is the God of judgment? Let me tell you something. There's a serious sin out there. There is a, are you okay? Is the baby okay? That's the first time he's been noisy in church. Uh, he just wants to go, all right, no problem. Okay. Have we heard this in church before? God loves all the sinners. He loves you. You know, you was caught for doing all these things, these evil criminal things, but Jesus loves you for it. Excuse me. <laughs> You're sitting there beating your wife. You're robbing people and taking their stuff. You're throwing a man out of his house for wanting to worship God. You're treating an employee badly. Oh, I'm sorry. In the Bible, it says God hated Esau. You cannot say God loves everyone and ever. It doesn't work like that. If you repent and come back to him, it's there. The love doesn't go away, but he will hate in that way. Okay? He's, everyone that does good, everything is okay in the sight of the Lord. No, it's not. You're being partial. And he delights in them. He loves them. No, he doesn't. Turn around or he will hate them. Okay? Where is the God of judgment? I'm guilty of this. This is Mario's sin. Oh, God, uh, you know, all these bad people have gotten away with the things they've done. That's an insult to God. Bad people will never get away with it. If you say, oh, those politicians will never go to prison for what they've done. They'll never pay for what they've done. Well, hang on a minute. You're insulting God now. Don't you know that there's a God of judgment? Never make the mistake. Never make the mistake of thinking that God won't punish bad people. Rather pity them that God will punish them. Hope that they repent. Pray that they repent. Your enemies, pray that they repent. Because God will come for them. And it will not be pretty. They will not escape. Now, there's a lot of gold in Africa. Okay? <laughs> a lot of gold in Africa. And when they find it, it looks like this. Okay? What do you notice? It's not pure gold, right? Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom you seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. The Bible starts with what? The Gospels start with Jesus appearing at 12 years old, preaching in a temple. The Lord, okay, will come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, the New Testament, Jesus will come. Whom you delight in, yes we do. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who shall be able to abide in the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. I'll explain the fuller's soap in a minute. But for now, the refiner's fire. This is how people appear. They've got little bits of good in them. Okay. The rest is rubbish that you have to get rid of to get to the pure gold. Jesus is like the refiner's fire. He melts away all the bad things and all that's left is good, valuable gold. Okay? And that's when you turn like this. Gold does not appear like the bottom picture ever. We have to go through this fire. We have to. The problems, I have, Jesus, God has to send some problems in your life to refine you. You haven't learned patience yet. I'm sorry, take the test again if you want to pass that exam. 
You want to be like a beautiful, pure thing to God. So yes, you do have to have some tribulation. You'll be trialed by fire, the Bible says. And this is the problems in our life. Now this is, uh, I'll have to explain the fuller's soap. <laughs> okay. This is full of soap. Now, believe it or not, the first people to invent soap were the Hebrews. How did they do it? It was called full of soap. It didn't look nice, okay? But this is what it was like. So your cloth would be dirty. You can, you can change the cloth to any color you want, but it starts off as white. That's the rules. It comes from the sheet. It's got to be white when you do it. Okay? So the fuller's job was to clean and whiten the cloth. Uh, in Jerusalem, the cleaning process took place in a fuller's field outside the city because of the smell. A fuller's field. That's why it's called fuller's soap. Dirt and oils were removed from the wall so they would be pure white and ready to be dyed and desired. If you like, the first ever washing machine. Okay? This is a fuller's soap. So what does it do? It makes you completely, yeah, you've got it. That's what it does. Jesus is like this, it says, in the verse before. I can't fill it all in one slide. Let me go back. <laughs> okay, so he's like a full of soap. So Jesus will completely cleanse you, 100%. That's what it says. This, trust me, you are very clean after this. There will be nothing left with this soap. It's, uh, okay, now, what else does Malachi say? I didn't actually believe that someone would be vain enough to build a gold toilet before I wrote this sermon. Okay, but yes, it's true, 100% true. People, there's people out there with uh, gold toilets. Now, when you give money to a church, is it so that they can buy gold toilets for themselves? You've robbed God, right? That money was for poor people. Okay. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed me? In tithes and offerings. Okay. We're a poor church. Okay. So it's not really. Uh, but say we was a rich church with money. Okay. Would that money be for Mario, the pastor? No. It's to do what? Help poor people. Okay? It's to help people. Yeah, it's to pay a few bills or whatever, but uh, usually it's so that you can give the money out. That's the whole point of people giving to the church. You trust the church that the church will look after poor people. Okay? You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Okay? Everyone's doing it wrong. It's not for gold cups or gold toilets for, for one man. You don't need a gold toilet to live. You need to pay the water bill, say. Okay? Anything more than that is robbing God. So people have done this. I can't, for, for the life of me, I can't see why someone would have a gold toilet. It makes no sense. The metal alone would be in trouble after a few flushes. Okay, anyway. So, uh, okay, the Bible says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here with Seth, the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. How are the con men preaching this? Send me all your money and I will bless you through the TV. Is that what it says? The Bible says nothing like that. Absolutely nothing. If I had a chance to get these preachers and do uh, an Elijah to them, I would do it. How dare you twist the word of God in that way? You bring the tires into the storehouse that there's meat. Somebody has come to me and they were homeless because of some reason. If I had the money... I would have had spare places to look after people. Do you remember it was your dream you told me? These are uh, women's shelters. Yeah, that was your dream. Mine was homeless. Yeah? If you had the money to set up a place where abused women could go, that's what you should be doing with the tithes in the storehouse. 
not buying a Mercedes for the preacher. He doesn't need it. I sat there and I couldn't believe some of the things that go on. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know that Orthodox priests make 2,500 euro a month. Good for them. You know, if the church has got the money to pay them, good for them. Fantastic. How much is going to the poor? <laughs> I, saw, <laughs> I saw a priest, I'm supposed to kiss his hand. You know, he gives me his hand to kiss. <laughs> I just shook it, you know. Um, but I'm supposed to kiss. And on the hand, rings. You know, <laughs> Have you ever seen those... Uh, in America, those gang members that have got big gold chains and rings, you know, and they put the rings together and it's their name. You know, that's what it reminded me of. I'm not knocking them because I know personally a lot of good Orthodox priests, okay? But not all of them are, <laughs> you know. You get it in any religion, but this personal one, and uh, I just I find it very annoying that this is happening anyway. Okay. Your words have been stout against me. Now, what's stout? It means tough. You've said tough, big man. You said big man words to God. Okay. What did they say to God? Well, let's see. What have we spoken so much against thee? We haven't spoken against God. Stop. You have. You have said. It is vain. That's why I put it in red, because it comes from Satan, these things that people are saying. Okay? It is vain to serve the Lord. What profit is it that we've kept his ordinance? What's the good of being a Christian? I'm not rich. You idiot. <laughs> You're the richest. You know the word of God. Okay? And that we have walked mournfully. It's so depressing, you know. And we have to go to church on Sundays, and we have to read the Bible. We, you idiot. Do you know what a blessing it is? Do you know how many people couldn't read at the beginning in medieval times? Do you know how many people risk their lives now in China and other places around the world? Do you know in Iran? They have underground Christian churches. They just want the opportunity to go to a church freely. And you consider it mournful. And now, I'm not accusing us. We don't consider it mournful because we're in a church. I'm just saying, some people, all right? Uh, <laughs> and we call the proud happy. Yea, that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. What blasphemy. What an insult to God. Like I said before, don't ever say that somebody's gotten away with anything. God has seen it and he will punish them. Nobody can trick God. Nobody. As Christians, it's difficult to believe because we get upset like uh, Ezekiel before, like the others. The prophets felt down at times. And now I understand when people feel down. It's going to happen to all of us. We feel a bit depressed that the bad people are getting away with it. But it's an insult to God. I know that God will punish my enemies. I have seen it happen with my own eyes. And when it happened, I, I, there, I sat there. What does the Bible say? On our church outside, we've got the psalm. And what does it say? Only with your eyes shall you behold the reward of the wicked. You're going to see the punishment of the bad people in your life. You're going to see it. Now, Then spoke Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. When the problems of this world get to you, don't lose your faith. Okay? The light is Jesus shows you the way. When he came to the earth, it was to show us how to live. And when I mean how to live. I'm saying we were dead in our sins before. The light is the way. Now, 
when you talk in a better way, I used to swear every third word was an F word, every fourth word, every third word. You haven't seen me do that, right? <laughs> I've been very tempted sometimes, but years and years and years, I was rebuked by someone because of it. I changed a lot. People see me now, Mario, you could be a lot better, you know, if you did it. You don't know how much I've changed. Okay? And uh, even Pastor Mark said it. Remember the pastor we had before? Okay? A lot of people have said it. Oh, well, we must wish Mark a happy birthday today. We'll do it afterwards. Uh, we should have done it last week. But we see now, in our lives, we have an example to live by. Christians follow the name Jesus. We follow his life. I'm going to come to earth and I'm going to show you the way to live and actually be alive. You will never feel more alive than you are for being a Christian. You feel amazing. I remember when I went to some of the most famous clubs. I worked at some of the most famous clubs in England, the most I was, a, I was a bouncer at Ministry of Sound, you know, the most up-to-date, you know, they've got their own record labels and stuff like that, and I met Jazzy Jeff and uh, Janet Jackson and things like that. I had a better time walking around the streets with some Christian guy, you know, crazy Irish, I call him. He takes me out, and we, we give sandwiches to the homeless. He makes his sandwich, that's what he does. He'll walk, he'll get a bus, and to make sandwiches to give to the homeless. I know he watches the sermon, so I'm going to embarrass him now. But there it is. I'm telling you, it was such a great night. It was 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night. And we were talking to homeless people, telling them about God. That was a much better night than watching a lot of drugged up people dancing with glowy rods between their fingers on stage with white gloves doing this for eight hours. I thought I was alive, but I wasn't. I was dead. Now I'm alive. Now I'm alive, yeah. So this is the light. Now what do I want to do with this light? I don't want to keep it to myself. <laughs> I want other people to feel what I feel now. I want other people out there to change their life. That's what I want. And I want to share the gospel with them. And I've done a, a very bad job so far. Only a few people baptized. Well, that's not good enough, Mario. As a church, I know, I remember you brought all those people to church last week. It was good. It was fantastic. Let's do it again. Let's do, do more for God. And whatever sacrifices we make, we'll trust God to reward us for that. Not that we do it for reward, but we know that if we give something up for God, he will reward that for us, whether it's rent money, whether it's whatever it is. God will be with us now. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to pray. And I'm going to do a prayer for the, for the Christians out there, but mainly for the non-Christians. We're going to pray for them. Lord, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that everyone, we know that you send the gospel into everyone's life and that everybody has a chance to, to read it. Lord, we know that there's no excuse now, more shame on humanity, that they have the Bible available to them in 50,000 forms. They can download it. They can watch it on, online. They can see church services. They can do all these things. Yet they won't come to you. Lord, we pray that they see that light in their life. Lord, change them as you changed me. For those that have changed, Lord, keep them close to you. That temptation doesn't make them fall. Lord, that Christians in the world stick to your word and not a false doctrine. Lord, let this light shine. Through us, let Jesus' light shine through us, that we may be lights in the world for other people. Lord, give us the power to help other people if we can. 
and give us the time to do it. Lord, I pray that all things bring glory to your name, all things that we do in our life. For the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, I'm going to stop the video for those watching. Uh, thank you for joining us today. May God bless you and keep you. And if you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you.